most people in America claim they have a faith. And they claim they have a faith because the history of our nation was based on faith. The development of faith, the pursuit of faith, the pursuit of life, liberty, and happiness. And literally, faith was a big thing for us. Our faith was something that we needed to do. Our faith was something we needed to pursue. And our faith is what keeps us whole, healthy, and, well, in hope for our life. Our faith is what we're after. But we tend to lose faith when Christians, Catholics, Muslims, and other people attack us. You see, when they choose to attack a person, they claim that they're attacking people, they're attacking religion. They're building what they like to call cross-cultural relationships with Wiccans and Muslims, and I don't see that. What I see them trying to do is to evangelize other people's nations, and it usually fails. And it fails because the abuse in those nations have been so deep-seated for so long, the sin is so great that they can't get out of their problems or their sin. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth, and America is about the, the love of Christ. America is about the love of God. America is about the love of the Lord's house, but people often aren't willing to submit to God. And when they aren't willing to submit to God, they start doing everything in their own mind, their own analysis, their own everything. And I'm not like that today. I literally submit all to God. My version of God, as my late siblings might say. But I have the right to pursue God according to my late mother and father who openly evangelized us all the time. I might not pronounce everything right, but that doesn't mean I'm not giving you the right information. You see, the right information is always the right information at the right moment of time. But the wrong information can become the wrong information at the wrong moment of time. I've been looking through my 2000-some video channel and discovering that some person of this hood, some police officer who's up to no good, has been deleting my videos, changing my placard slides, and interfering with some of the most important work that I've done for my life. I've seen several videos on police officers deleted, which I didn't delete, and I've seen several videos on love and the person I love, also incomplete. What I can tell you is that these people had no lawful right to touch anything I've made. And what I can also tell you is that in life, men are in pursuit of well being made. What I mean by that is that we all make our own way, but when you try to make your way off someone else's work, you really lose everything God planned for you. You might gain a little bit over time, you might gain quite a lot, but at some point your lies, your thieving, your cheating will blow up in your face. People always want to say that about other people. People always want to say, I didn't do that, I'm not responsible for that, you felt that alone, I didn't give you anything to make you feel that way, and that's not true. People like me, people like you, lie every day, according to who? Satanists, atheists, Christianists, Calvinists? It doesn't really matter. What matters is what you look like to the Lord Most High. What matters is what lo you look like to God in the sky. What matters is what Jesus Christ will think when you step through those gates to heaven. And what are you going to do? Give Gabriel a wink and say... You know, I got rid of, got away with all this stuff because Jesus died for my sins. Well, maybe, and maybe not. You see, the implication is if we know that Bible verse 316, and if we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then everything in our life is going to be fine, and that's not true. You see, the next part of that step is to pursue the Lord in a house of God, whatever type of house that needs to be for you. And sometimes when that house of God fails you, when they bring you into an office and humiliate you, when they don't include you in anything that they're trying to do to you, and they just presume they have rights to shoo you and interfere with you and sue you, and what's the other word we can come up with? Basically belittle you and shame you. They're not in God's house. You see, no third party can simply interact with one side of a situation and pretend it's okay. That is not what the Bible says to do today. But in our lifetime, we have the right to say things, do things, be things, become things, and change our life today for God. But the people of Satan, the people stuck in vanity, vice, violence, vandalism, and any of the V's that, like vendetta, literally don't know Jesus today. 
Because if you're a pursuer of Jesus, then you're supposed to be a forgiver. If you're a pursuer of God, then you're supposed to be a deliverer. A person who is just a survivor is not necessarily a thriver, but that doesn't mean they don't have God. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And while my feathered friends say goodbye to me and fly off to do other things, to find things to eat, because they know what I've provided them for a treat is no longer available, and they ate it all, all 47 of them, there's nothing else I can say to them. But when I'm talking about me, and when I'm talking about you, when I'm talking about the Lord, I'm talking towards helping you to submit your life to the Lord. Whatever your version of the Lord is, that's up to you. Whatever you call the Lord... That too is up to you. I know that angels of the Lord call them Lord God. That is a mother and father God and that Lord Jesus is sort of a part of that concept of Trinity. He came before as Melchizedek. He came after as Jesus. And openly he can come again and again to see what people are doing in his world today. But when we honor the earth and we take care of our waterways, when we are careful with our earth and we build our farms and our animal places, then we have openly still open spaces to live. But builders of America, real estate of America, mortgage brokers of America, and all the construction workers might be ruining our earth. And I'm not going to be a part of that. We have plenty of buildings in which we can build in, sell in, and work in. But here's the deal. America is becoming more and more online. America is becoming more and more without feeling and Americans are becoming more and more hateful of other people around the world. God is not pleased when we do this. You see, there's a lot of things we can learn from the Middle East and Asia about God that is different than what we carry in our hearts here in America. And there's a lot of things that we as American citizens can share with the East, but we don't get there because we're not able to do so across the language barrier. But in life there are some simple truths across the world, around the world, even considered capable things in the United Nations or other uh, world trade organizations and things that are really a part of our international world. That everyone in the world has rights, everyone in the, right, in the world has human dignities, and everyone in the world has the right to fall in love with a girl or a guy, whatever your thing is. But when you interfere with the Lord's plan for someone's life, when you openly think, I'm just going to stand in for someone else today, you might be really putting yourself in sin. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to step away from sin. I'm encouraging you today to step away from selfishness. I'm encouraging you today to step away from Satan. And Satanic people are aggressors and usurpers and assaulters of good ideas that God places in your soul. They ruin life. They ruin the environment. They ruin corporations. They ruin laws. They ruin everything that we work for in America to become one of the greatest nations around the world. But entitlement thinking will never help you. Abusive thinking will never entreat you. And threatening people like me will never help you in front of God.